So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ilka Halinen. I'm the chairman of the Alvarado Society. Uh, it's Alvarado Society point fee. So, please go there and join us. Um, last autumn, uh, the Soyuz Society visited Alvarado's uh, Museum Gunsten in Aalborg, Denmark, and uh, the, re the re renovation and extension of the building was uh, shortly completed, and Agde Lars Bendrup uh, introduced us the, the plans and the building. And listening, listening to this introduce, introduction, uh, we thought that this experience we need, we have to get to Yuvaskula, because uh, we will have the similar project going on or in the beginning in Alvarado Museum. And uh, well, here it is tonight. And uh, Lars Bendrup couldn't make it, but we got the project leader from of Gunsten, uh, architect Lenny Hammer. And now we can start to enjoy you, your lecture. Yes. So please. Thank you. Hello. Good evening. And first of all, Ilka, thank you very much for uh, having me and inviting me here to Uvescula. It's a great honor to be in uh, Alvarado's uh, home city and country and talk about one of his uh, buildings that has meant a great deal for our studio. Um, as you know, my name is Lena Hammer, and I work at the studio of Transform, which is a Danish uh, studio with this logo. And um, in 2013, our team, which is uh, all actually the companies and consultancies mentioned here, won a competition for the renovation and revitalization of Kunsten. Altos building. So uh, this, in this lecture, I will try to take you through the process of uh, what was before we came in, what happened, what met us when we started the assignment, and what was the final result. Konsten is located in Olbo, which is uh, placed in the northern part of Jutland. Olbo is the fourth largest city in Denmark, and it has um, approximately 125 thousand inhabitants, so it's similar to the big uvascular area here in the inhabitants. Um, the Kunsten Museum is located on the, oi, sorry, here, is located on the red spot. And when the thoughts of an art museum in Olbo emerged almost 60 years ago, the city of Olbo was an industrial city. It was a worker city. And a group of people there thought that um, they had an interest in art and they wanted the city to become more aware of the, uh, of the art. And therefore, they formed a group that wanted to start the work of getting a real art museum to the city. At the beginning, the art museum was very small in Olbo and it was placed at the same location as the historical uh, museum. So this is the site that they came at the end, they reached. It's an old uh, gravel pit. The whole area of Olbo has uh, a lot of industry related to gravel and chalk from the ground. So this site has a, a very steep hill at the back. You will also see that in the in the illustrations. That's why it's um, has a, quite a special location. I will take you through a little timeline just to get the a sense of what happened when. In 57, the Nordic architecture competition for this new art museum in Olbo is announced. And Alva Alto and his wife Elisa Alto and a Danish architect called Jean-Jacques Baruel, they win the assignment. In 68, the construction of the museum begins. And in 72, quite, quite a long time after the competition has been announced, the museum is inaugurated. In 95, the building is listed in Denmark as a very fine example of an Alvaldo building. Uh, and in 2014, the revitalization and the restoring of the museum begins. And of course, you can ask yourself, why is there a need of 
a restoration and an extension and a revitalization of a museum that's not that old. It's from 72. But um, on different scales, there, there were a need for a revitalization of the museum, both on a building scale, technical installations, but also actually on a functional way, because this art museum needed to be able to go into the future as a modern museum. And the frame that the Alva Alto building were given were limiting what the museum actually wanted. And I'll try to show you that later on. So it was both like an architectural technical issue that there were things not working well in the museum, but it was just as well that the function inside the house, the art museum, needed new framework to, to be a modern museum. Uh, so, in 2016, the Museum Kunsten reopens with the result of the project I was project leader on from Transform. And um, we were this team I showed you before. We, we were our architecture studio, and then there was a, a restoration architecture studio, and we had engineer and landscape, engine, uh, landscape architects, and we had a consultant on the team. The museum is approximately 6,000 square meters, of which the exhibition area is about 2,500 square meters, just to give you a little idea of that. This is a picture from uh, the inauguration in 72, where you can see Alvar Alto and his wife, and Jean-Jacques Bariel and his wife. So, yeah, we like this picture. You can see the anticipation of, of uh, getting in. <laughs> So this is a museum, and as I to told you about, it's not easy to see uh, the steep hill behind here, but it's actually quite a steep hill, and it's uh, quite unlikely for the northern Jutland geography to have steep hills like that. But here it is, because it's been, all this area has historically been dug out because of the gravel pit. And then we have this uh, forest. So we have a beautiful white museum that rises up against the green background. And in the rear, you can see uh, the fjord uh, passing through Jutland. So it's situated in a very uh, sort of nice green surrounding. When we started out on this, uh, this job, we had uh, to find out what were the key qualities that we need to maintain. And in very uh, short terms and very limited two pictures, uh, it is this uh, story about the white marble house that rises up against the green, and then it's this beautiful, intelligent way of taking in the daylight to an art museum. Uh, the very, uh, two of the very big qualities in this house. When we started out, uh, the museum was, as I told you, not in the best of states. It was, uh, it was tired, you could say, both the facade, indoor and outdoor, you can see uh, how the marble has uh, damages here and the wooden, there hadn't been much money for um, maintaining the building. So it had sort of become worse and worse in state. So it was, um, you can say, in high time that someone took care of this. Also here you can see something that you might have experienced similarity in, uh, in Finland where the, the marble plates start to bend out. Um, and that causes this uh, dirt and, and algae to, to stay on the surface. So uh, it looked, it looked uh, quite tired. Also, the, sky, the famous skylights that we saw before from within, they were leaking, so they were water dripping in on the artwork and on the floors. So there was a big uh, challenge in maintaining them. Here are some, just some brief photos of some of the detailing where you can see that... Um, this was from the registration of the whole building. And you can see here that the marble is gone here and there are damages. And as I told you, there were also, apart from the architectural and technical issues of the building, there were also functional issues. Um, the museum is very dependent on its shop. And it could uh, sound fun, but a lot of... Um, Actually, they are dependent on the money they earn from the shop. So the shop is an important function in the museum. When we started the pro project or when we had won the competition, it looked like this with the counter and the shop sort of mixed together, 
just as you came into the museum, the first thing that met you was the souvenir shop. And we thought, well, that's, that's one thing that was a, a pity. Also, this is the, the cafe area. It's an art piece of art, this here. So it's actually uh, okay. But, but the, the museum also had ambitions about the, the cafe and how it should be more open and how it should make people stay longer in the museum. There were also other demands. There were demands of, uh, of new space, exhibition space, and also for children's uh, art lab. So there were a lot of functional issues also that the museum would like to be built into an extension and a restoration of this. So if I should sum up some of the big challenges in this project, it's um, restoring the facade, it's provide a new security system, because uh, at the time the museum just couldn't provide the, uh, the needed security system for the artwork which meant that they couldn't lend expensive art from other museums in the world because they weren't classified. So we also had to control the incoming daylight because the UV light damages actually some of the artwork. We had to improve the quality of the artificial light and we had to create optimized climate control. We had to upgrade and restore interior surfaces and we had to improve space and design for new and existing functions and we needed to restore the garden as well. We won the competition uh, based on what we called a sustainable vision, that we wanted to uh, maintain the visions of Alto and Barriel as much as possible, exterior and interior, and we would like to maintain or recycle all surfaces or details, and we must respect the motives and the tools of the original house. Uh, our vision in the competition was based on five main points. Just here, yeah, you see this, uh, the, uh, the museum lying here. The first point is uh, the reuse of space. We wanted actually to touch the least possible because uh, it's a magnificent building and there's, uh, in our minds, no need for building a whole new building next to it or trying to challenge the building that's already there. So uh, we, the diagram here shows, uh, sorry, the diagram here shows uh, the light blue is what we actually maintain and, and restore. And um, the darker blue here is what we sort of re restore, but we add new things. And the darkest blue here is an extension that we make on the parterre level. I'll come back to that later. Then we would like to maintain that the daylight is the main light source on the ground floor and that artificial light is added in a whole new area on the parterre which the museum didn't have before. They couldn't show video installations very well because they had too much light in the house. So there was a need to both secure the art in an enclosed space like this but also to be able to use artificial light in the art installations. And also most importantly when we uh, arrived at the museum it had um, there was actually like a flow, like a dead end flow. There was there were only one stair between the two floors. So when you went down here, you would always end up in a dead end. So a very important part is this stair that we added into the museum, down into the new exhibition area, so that you could actually have a flow that was in a loop. That has meant uh, a lot for the for the moving around in the museum. And then the key point number five is that when we extend, we mostly do it underground. This is a, a big storage room for artwork. So now they get their own local storage room underground where they can storage art that is not uh, exhibited. In working with this uh, Alto building, we needed some kind of tool to be able to uh, navigate in the different type of rooms. Which rooms are the original? Alto rooms where we restore, which rooms are we allowed to put things into that are new, which rooms are maybe all new and we could give them a new spatial experience and which uh, rooms are like surface functions. So we made this system of uh, four overall design categories where we sort of grade every room in, this, in the museum like this in order to say that the two grey colours here that's where it's mainly the Alto interior we restore. Mainly it should look like it always did, just renewed. 
And then when we go downstairs to the parterre, the B is a whole new space that wasn't there before. And the, and the purple here is also some new reinvented spaces that weren't there before. In the ground floor, we make uh, also some new toilets and here are the deposits. So it was like, it's more to say that we, we developed this working tool for ourselves in order to keep track into an existing listed building. Where do we do what? And where do we sort of, where do we design and where do we stay away from designing? And we think it's been, it was like a game changer when we came into that because uh, you can easily either go in the end where you say, well, it's an alto building, we can't touch anything. Or you can say, I need to put my design or our design into this building. And neither of those were suitable for our way of looking at this project. We wanted to sort of intelligently go in and massage and do the right thing, the right place. So that was a, a way of sort of keeping track, not to, uh, yeah, to be clear in the concept. Uh, I will now try to show you some before and after images to show some of the key spatial inventions we did. I talked about that stair to the downstairs and actually looked like this when we came. It had a, like a personal stair in here, an entrance to an exhibiting hall here. So in the next picture, you will see what we did. We primarily put this wall further on, made a new opening into a stair like this. And this actually created this loop of the stair going down. This is uh, the second big spatial thing we did with the, with the whole new exhibition area downstairs. All this used to be technical rooms for ventilation pipes and tubes and everything. And we, uh, we sort of developed this area into the sort of the stomach of the museum. So from the outside, you can't see that we did this. But all these uh, technical rooms could be, wait, they could be uh, sort of condensed with the new installations. They could become much smaller, and then we could use this space for this new exhibition space. And also here you can see that the stair I mentioned before is going down into the middle of this area. And then you can actually loop out to the cafe, going up the stairs and around. And that's important for a museum, that you have this natural flow, that you don't end up in, in dead ends. This was a, like an image of what the museum wanted to do in that area downstairs. They wanted to be able to do like this, uh, video installations, art installations with light, or all sorts of things like this that weren't possible in the upper exhibition areas where the daylight was the most important source of light. When we go downstairs also to uh, the parterre where the new exhibition room is in here, it looked like this before. This was a dead end. You, ca you came down here and there were no really exit anywhere. Uh, this was uh, the cafe. It was actually also designed it as a library room, but within the years it had changed into a cafe but it was kind of also a narrow entrance and you had to go in very deep to see that it was a cafe. So the museum had an ambition of maybe opening it up as a cafe is a very vibrant and active area in a museum. If, er if it was more visible, maybe people would stay longer and they wanted to, to be in the museum. And also on this level, they wanted to create some uh, activities for kids like a kids art lab there are still auditoriums here so you actually have a lot of activities going on so this is a, an illustration of what we ended up with, with doing we got permission to take this wall away and make an opening into the new space exhibition space and also open the cafe up and we also got permission to put the marble floor all the way into the cafe as we worked with uh, restoration architects and the building was listed, so we had to work with the Danish sort of committee of listed buildings and everything we did of changes like this, we had very long discussions and very long sort of, um, yeah, discussions and pros and cons and why did we want to change this? And they said, but it's a listed building, so you shouldn't move too much of the walls. And But it was a very good and very productive dialogue where we sort of heard the situation from many sides and at the end it ended up with its solution. I think when you see the final results, I, I hope you agree that it, uh, it works actually quite well for a modern museum. 
I'll just uh, go through the plants now, and this is like existing and new plants. And uh, this is existing plants, so keep notice of this little personnel stair that was there before. And then here is the new stair and the new sort of uh, connection downstairs. Here is the shop. We put the shop towards the street and we uh, sort of got a better space for the counter. It's difficult to, to just grasp the plants this quickly, but I hope if I point out to you what, uh, what you should look for. Here you can see the cafe in the very rear and the very little, or the double door here. So if I change to the new, now you can see that it's open all the way in. So you can actually see the counter and you can see people sitting there when you move here. And you can go into this new exhibition area from the cafe area and you can go up to the other uh, exhibition areas on top. This staircase has this uh, funny flow and that's because the Kunsten has actually been extended one time before. And at the very beginning of the house, when the house was built, this was the outer wall. So when we extended it again, we kept the stair in that line so that we sort of had this signal of what was once there. On this floor, you also have auditoriums and you have art labs for, for kids. And here is the administration. Here is the uh, pit where they drive in with the art, the loading bay, and all this is tool workshop area and uh, cantina. So all this is like backstage, you could call it. And then you have the children's things here. At the basement level, it was all technical rooms when we arrived, but um, we uh, made some new toilets down there. And in that basement, you were sort of, there weren't really any alto significance. So especially in an area like that, we sort of put in our design. I'll take you through the, um, the sections and it's mostly just to give you an idea of how beautiful it sort of sits in the landscape and how the main floor with all the daylight is lifted up. So all the time you sort of have that daylight uh, floor lifted up and then you have all the functions, the sort of supporting functions underneath. And here you can see the beautiful skylights that there are here to bring in the daylight. Um, here's another section. This is the section I took also to tell, to talk about that when we renovate a building like this, there's so much in the light and in the ventilation and in the getting all this new technique into a house that also that already has its own its own rules. And you can't make walls thicker. You can't make the ceiling lower because you need to preserve those spatial qualities. So it's really um, it's a big challenge to to fit all those things in. Here you can see a picture of how we sort of we hide a new uh, ventilation system into those uh, skylights. They were hollow in here. So we had space to put in tubes for ventilation. And all the time you have to work into those things. What's already there? Where do we have space? How much can we minimize the technical installations? And this is, uh, this is the facade. You can see how the slope comes down here and then the museum lies here. And there's just one more facade to show you also the pattern of the, of the marble here. This is the site plan. And uh, just to talk about the garden here, the landscape architects uh, worked with us on this and it also needed a restoration. Um, so the building, <laughs> the building site begins and it was quite a challenge to make a building site in this area because the, the sculptural garden mustn't be damaged and still it's a building site and here you can see they start to put take off the marble and it actually uh, reveals yellow brick within so for some months people thought that it uh, it was a yellow brick building but it was just because the facade had been had been taken off taken off this uh, was a, just some pictures from the construction site i talked about this underground storage room for the art this is where you can see existing pillars being supported from beneath while they're digging out for that deposit. So it was, it was uh, nerve wracking to go at the building site at that moment because in that period, because uh, you had these uh, pillars standing in the air and people digging all over. And, but fortunately, everything uh, turned out to the best. But also here you can see how, 
how the listed building is hanging up there in the air while they are digging deep underneath. I also brought this picture to show you. Uh, this is from Carrara in, in Italy, where a special task force from our team went to pick out the, with the client to pick out marble for, for the facades. The facades was one of the biggest issues why this museum needed restoration. And uh, therefore, of course, uh, the picking out of the right marble had huge attention from both client and fundings and, and also from the, the technical team that we were on. We had a special consultant who were very into this marble that also went with them there. And uh, it was also because it was listed and the marble was of the quality it was, it would easily say that just choose another marble that, that won't bend. But then you would need to change the color as well. And the building was listed, so we were not allowed to change the color. So the balance came in choosing a better marble, but with the color as similar to the existing as well as possible. There is a difference in tone if you know what to look for in the new and the old, but it's very, very close. And it uh, should be a marble that, that is uh, better in, uh, in maintaining and hanging there without, uh, without bending. But uh, impressive um, pictures here. And they went there and they picked out blocks of marble. And then they had all the slates cut out and numbered and photographed. And then at home, the restoration people were sitting with photographs of each slide of marble to put it on the facade so that the pattern of the marble, it has these gray tones you can also see, so that that would match on the whole facade. So it's actually totally choreographed, that, um, that marble facade. And it just looks very natural, but it's, everything has been uh, sort of seen through. So I will take you through some pictures now of the, of the final result. Um, this is from the sculptural garden. And you can see here the, the marble facade that really shapes up the whole museum now. Now it stands as I suppose it looked when it was inaugurated and it's back at its, uh, its right position. And uh, we have a look into the foyer here. We also needed to uh, restore all the wooden windows, but the, and we also added some new windows on the backside. But that, uh, the wood that's used is uh, illegal to use anymore. It's like a rainforest thing. So we had to find another type of wood that would uh, look the same. Yeah, here you see uh, this steep hill, and then the, lands, the, the museum builds up here. And there were also these uh, amphitheaters outside. They were also restored. It's difficult to see in the snow, but they also had new uh, stone on them and the garden wall were all restored and painted. So it stands really slick. This is uh, the area with the, the children's art lab. And up here is the uh, exhibition areas with the daylight coming in. And maybe it's, uh, it's not that obvious here, but these are those lines in the marble that were so important to sort of have, have in consideration when we put up the facade. This is a look into the art lab, an auditorium, and uh, also to say that all the existing detailing on the house were restored and renewed and updated with the newest uh, techniques. Here is a picture again of the, the facade where you can see it a bit closer that there is actually some, there's a lot of lines in it. And if you don't, if you're not aware of sort of how to put them up so that they seem natural, it looks like they have different patterns and it doesn't work well. Now we go within uh, the museum into the, into the hall the main foyer and a look out into the sculptural garden. All the existing original lamps also, they were restored and then they were exchanged with up-to-date light bulbs and technique because the system that was inside them was also outdated. So there's been, every lamp in here has been restored. This is, uh, was the existing stair 
going down. Here is a look at the entrance area and the new counter that we uh, designed. And in here, behind here, is the shop. So now we sort of, uh, we obtained what we had wanted, that when you came into the museum, it should be like a more calm and sort of um, alto experience and not like uh, coming in and seeing a souvenir shop. So uh, we parted the counter and the shop area and then uh, I think we sort of got this back where you sort of come in and you are oriented towards the artwork and not what to buy next. And here is the shop, which is an important part of uh, today's museum. And uh, we designed all the furniture and the built-in furniture for the shop. Uh, and it's now has, it's uh, three times bigger than it was before. And it actually works well with it having its own room. So, uh, so all these boxes and all this we also designed for the room. One of the existing doors or new. Yeah, this is a chamber music room that was also in the house. It's, um, it was, it's five, it has five, you know, uh, what's it called? It's like a five frame or shape uh, in order for the music to be, uh, to not hit straight walls. Um, and also that's why the lamps are placed like this originally, because the orchestra should be uh, sitting under here. And in this, this is an example of a room where we sort of restore all the alto detail, but we add new detail. So the client and the museum wanted this to be also like a library room. So we designed uh, those library furniture to fit the room. And then we chose that every loose furniture in there should be like alto. So this is like one of those where we don't just restore the alto, we restore it and then we add on new new design. This is a picture from the, the daylight exhibition areas with some of the first exhibitions there. And also these lamps were restored and the, and, and the rooms are of course beautiful and so well thought of. So it's just to, uh, to touch the least possible in there. And also, yeah, the shape of the, all these shapes in the ceiling to bring in the daylight is really, uh, yeah, it's been amazing to work with that. This is, uh, again, the existing stair towards uh, the parterre. And the new stair we did is this, the new stair we added. And we took the same uh, geometry as the old stair. So all the detailing of the marble and all the sizes of the steps are actually the same. But we designed, we designed a new railing because we thought that uh, we wanted to sort of express in a very sort of, sort of a calm way that something new has happened. And therefore we designed this wooden handrail with brass fittings and then we integrated the light into the railing so that when you go into that room the only light in there is actually integrated into the railing. And we, there was also discussion whether we should copy the old railing from Alto but because it was a new stair and it was into a new function we could uh, we agreed that with them that we could make a new detail. This is just the, the signage for the whole museum. And this is the exhibition room in the, when you come to the parterre. This exhibition room that I talked about where it was supposed to be possible to do video installations and control the light and control the security and control the climate. And this is, um, yeah, we chose like a concrete floor with a look of stones into it so that it got the same sort of stone quality as the marble, but still had a more modern look to it because it was a whole new room. And uh, yeah, this is without anything. This is the first exhibition. It's a Pakistani uh, artist who uh, painted it on the floor and on the walls. So it was uh, like a shock to see when we came there and he painted all over, but it was uh, very beautiful. And here you see the new stair coming down. And this is what they 
one of the things they can now do. They can have exhibitions and partition walls and close it off or keep it dark or keep it lit. They have all possibilities now of, of showing the art as, uh, as is suitable. This is a view into the, to the auditoriums and the cafe where we chose uh, again alto interior and restored lamps and hung them up and in, in, like in a different way than before, but it was still the alto design. So now, uh, and we restored the, um, yeah, some of the counter thing here to make it more open, more modern. And this beautiful dark blue is the original tile. And when you go down to the lowest basement where there were no alto sign, we sort of uh, thought that we would um, give people an, an experience of something totally new, but with uh, lines back to alto. So we actually reused this dark blue color and then we just uh, gave it all up for this, uh, these designed toilets with the blue and the white and these uh, like splashes of a snowball or something on the wall. So that was one of the categories where we were designing. Sometimes you use the mirror tiles to get this 3D uh, view. And of course you can say that uh, that has uh, nothing to do with Alto. It's a, in a way interpretation with the color, but then also it was this discussion of where to, where to show some new design. And we did that in the, among other places, we did that in those uh, areas down there. This is the children's lab or family's labs where you can go and work with art during a, an exhibition. That was also a room they didn't have before. And it's, uh, it's also one of those things that sort of make the museum vibrant and livable and modern that you actually embrace all groups of people, both young and old and, and those in between. And those functions where you can actually work and play, they are very uh, good at that. This is another one of the rooms for children where school groups, for example, can gather. It, was, it used to be an old, one of very old uh, auditoriums. So we kept the stairs here and then they have these things they can, yeah, they can use room, the room in a very flexible way. And then there's just some final. Yeah, this is the other old auditorium that has been restored and secured and had new lights. And this is the meeting room with the lamps. And at the end, this, uh, looking out into the garden. Yeah, and there it is, the, the Kunsten in Olva. Actually, there's a Finnish uh, artist, Karina Kaikunen, something exhibiting there at the moment. But uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lenin. And now, I think we have some time for discussion and maybe some questions. I'd like to ask first Tommy Lind from Alvarado Foundation. Can we have your comments first? <laughs> So, thank you very much, Lena, for your presentation. Uh, I have uh, visited the house about a year ago, but now, after your presentation, it makes much more sense. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, <clears throat> really, the uh, uh, the way you presented it and, and uh, explained why and how the changes have been made to the building, it makes real sense and also that there have been changes made before and, and you, you also uh, commented those and, and uh, uh, decided what to keep and, and what to change and what, what to change more. Uh, so I, I, I really think that this is a, a very successful restoration of an art building and even though you had to change the whole facade but uh, 
I guess you could, could not help it. <laughs> and, and the, the, but the things she did in the in the interior and and uh, the opening of the cafe and and uh, the dark room and and things like that, I, I think they're very important in a in an art museum today. And 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 because you were able to make the extension uh, within the walls of the building, it's it's uh, always, always something. Uh, uh, we have to congratulate. <laughs> so, so uh, I can't say any more. I, I, I think you, you did well, and, and uh, I once again want to want to thank for the presentation and, and, the, and the good good work you've done. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, another comments or questions. Thank you also for the presentation. It was very nice. My name is Hanne Sippo. Um, I have a question. Uh, I know that this kind of a building needs a lot of technical equipment. Where did you put all that? Uh, there are still uh, big technical areas in the ground floor and in the basement next to those uh, toilets, the, the ones you saw at the end. There is a huge technical room in there and also in the art deposit area some of it is a technical room actually quite huge so we sort of squeeze those technical things in still into the main frame of the building in order not to yeah put it out into the open so uh, yeah and and that's also probably because of course some of the new technical installations they take up more space than what was there already but there are also other things that are made more intelligent today so you can actually do it with, with a smaller space. But it's a challenge, and also when you can't make any walls uh, deeper, and it was the um, brick facade, uh, the painted brick facade inside, you know, you can't just make a hole and then plaster it up. You have to sort of always preserve the walls. So uh, there's been a lot of, of uh, engineering work with that. Uh, it was a, quite a big change, and uh, and uh, all the marbles and so on. Uh, can you tell us what, what what were the costs and and how was was it financed? Yeah, um, I think the um, I had it numbered up. It was like um, twenty one million euros was the cost of the project, sort of very round numbers, and uh, I think maybe um, 12, 12 million came from private funding. We have some, uh, maybe you know those um, mask ships that sail with containers, this Danish company. They, um, they have a huge fund foundation and they help in cultural building projects and other, th other things, they give donations. And uh, they were in the game at the very beginning in order for this to be possible because the municipality didn't, I think, had, had that type of money to, uh, to do this. But when the funding came in, that was the museum who, sought, who sort of tried to get the funding. And when they started to get funding it's in, then the municipality clicked in and gave, gave the rest. So there's been several funding, private funding. There's also an Olbo-based foundation from... It's actually a family who became rich on selling cigarettes called Ober. They are, they are still a very uh, rich company and they have a huge foundation as well that also supports the Utsun Center and, and other architectural uh, sort of institutes, institutions in, in Denmark and especially in Olbo. So this was, uh, this was uh, obvious for them to support that. So it's partly private money and pu partly yeah. public money. Yeah. So this is what we are maybe missing. We <laughs> need those foundings more, rich foundings. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And maybe so I could also add that a, that a really key key figure in this, which I hadn't mentioned at all, is the director of the museum, um, a Danish woman called Gide Ersko. She's uh, she took over the the director uh, job for I don't know how many years. It's not even ten years, I think. And she's uh, been a tremendous driver for this uh, restoration and for seeking funding and for 
rethinking the whole museum and and trying to be uh, clear about what is uh, what is a museum in the future where should they move and also she was a great uh, she was a great client very uh, very sort of um yeah she listened to all the different people who knew different things which was supposed to be what everybody does in a co-work that you have respect for other people's uh, knowledge uh, so it was really a good co-work and i think with uh, without her it's been it wouldn't have been the same. She's a she's a huge driver. When when the museum was uh, under construction for several years, they just had the biggest success before they closed. So what do you do? You have no museum, and where do you go? So she invented this concept of uh, the art going out to the people. So they had these uh, wagons with artwork. They went home to people privately. They went to schools. They went to markets and put up artwork. So she kept sort of. Uh, Kunsten alive while the building was under construction. So when it reopened, nobody had lost track of uh, Kunsten as an institution. And that's that's also it's a uh, it's not architecturally, but it's so important that when it reopens, it's not like what has anybody forgot everything that they sort of keep keep working. Mm. So it's also yeah the client is also key um, key figure in a, in something like this. Okay. Uh, maybe this would be all. Uh, I must tell you that we try to, and we are doing this in, in YouTube in the, in the near future, so you can tell, you can see it again and you can tell everybody that this is to be seen. So, thank you. Yeah, thank welcome. You, and, uh, I wish you a uh, great of luck with your on yeah, the projects and I think be interested in, uh, in looking at them also. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you, everyone.